Good morning. Good to see y'all. Come on in, come on in, come on in. If you're watching on Facebook, go on ahead and share this. Share this. Good morning. Speak to me as you come in. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me uh, where you are logging on from Facebook, YouTube. Good to see you. You can share this too. Let somebody know that we're on. Tell me where you are tuning in from. Those of you all who are tuning in from Chicagoland area this morning, don't do me a favor. Don't complain about the weather. Don't don't even start. You know where you live. You know where you live. You know where you've chosen to live. Go get the salt. Go get the shovel. Just get your mind right. Because this is where we live. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for joining me, Pastor Sean Marshall. I am husband, father, pastor, coach, consultant, wrote a book. Your next move now, transition decisions. Um, and the reason why I wrote that book is because I know that there are people who have a call and a purpose from God on their life. And sometimes we get stuck. And over the course of my life, I've learned some lessons about how to navigate change and transition. And my assignment is to share those lessons with you so that you can get unstuck and make your next move. So we've been talking for the last several days about what you need for 2024 in order to move forward. And I believe that it is a revelation. You don't need a resolution. You need a revelation from the Lord about what God is doing. Because if you can figure out what God is up to and respond to that, your life will change. Right. So um, if you're not following me, subscribe to my channel on YouTube. I'll be posting more uh, content, more insight, more support for you uh, to help you uh, to grow and go forward. So today. I believe that God wants you to know that he is revealing new opportunities. God is revealing new opportunities. You may have heard it said that opportunity knocks. I want to tell you that that is not quite true. Opportunities do not knock. Opportunities whisper. Opportunities whisper. I remember I was talking to a friend in 2019 and we were talking about stock and we were talking about different investments that she and her family had made in stocks and how one uh, stock investment she had, you know, made several years before that had generated tremendous return and uh, that with that return, they were able to take that money that they made and make a down payment on their house. And uh, she was telling me about a company that I needed to look into. This was fall of 2019. She was telling me about a company that I needed to look into. And she said, you need to invest in this company. I think they're going to be doing big things. And I said, all right. And I, said, I looked up the company. I said, well, I ain't never heard of. Oh, Zoom. Yeah, Zoom. OK, yeah, I know Zoom. We've used Zoom sometimes, you know. And um, lo and behold, six months later, 2020 happened and everybody was on Zoom. The whole world was on Zoom. Zoom blew up. Opportunities do not knock. They whisper. There are plenty of people who will tell you that they have been transformed, had their lives changed because they were perceptive to an opportunity. And often these are opportunities that don't really scream for our attention. They, they are opportunities that you have to be perceptive of. They're opportunities that you have to do something different you have to think different. You have to act different in order to leverage 
these opportunities. I believe that sometimes when there is an opportunity before you, that the shortest distance between you and the opportunity that can change your life is a risk. Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 3. All right. The context for today's conversation is in the in the context of verses 3 through 9. But let's start with verse 3. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, why sit we here until we die? What's going on? In this context, we find four men living with a deadly condition. So they had a deadly condition. They had leprosy. Leprosy was an incredibly contagious disease. In fact, the culture and the government of their time understood very little about it. So they did something called quarantine, right? When you were found to have leprosy, we quarantined you. You meant This meant that you had to be separated from your family and your friends and your loved ones. You lost your income because you couldn't interact with people often. It meant that you would lose your status and your social standing and your connections because of this contagious and deadly, terrible, excruciatingly painful disease, right? Not only did they have a deadly condition, they were in a deadly context because there was a famine going on in the land. Israel was at war with Aram or Syria, right? And the king of Syria had conducted a military operation that shut down the capital city of Samaria. So the whole region was shut down. Traffic was stalled. Schools were closed. Trade was cut off. So if you went to the store, there was no food on the shelves. You couldn't find no chicken. You couldn't find no toilet paper. Does this sound familiar? So there was a deadly context. And when you operate with a deadly condition, in a deadly context, you can begin to form some deadly conclusions. Because we see that these four men are just sitting. They are sitting. They had no control over their condition. They had no control over their context. And therefore they had concluded that they had no other choice but to just sit right there and die. I believe that there are plenty of people, many of you watching, who are stuck today. You're stuck not because you have leprosy. You're stuck because you've been dealing with issues and you've been dealing with some deadly issues. You've been dealing with sickness. You've been dealing with regret. You've been dealing with pain and trauma. We talked about pain yesterday. You've been dealing with lament over some of your decisions in life. You, you're living with some deadly issues, some issues that have immobilized you, right? You're dealing with um, a marriage that seems like it's getting ready to fall apart. You're dealing with the deadly issue of not knowing what to do for, for your job. You're not really knowing your purpose and, and you feel stuck. And when we get that feeling, it can be immobilizing. Don't know what to do. Don't even know if we did anything, would it even matter? Would it even work, right? And not only are you dealing with those deadly thoughts and deadly conditions, you're in a deadly context because you look up, you turn on the news. Oh my God, who's at war with who? What, what blew up what? What's going on with you? The, the, buses and all the, the, the people being here and there. What, what is happening in the news today? What, what, who, what dictator is rising up to try to bring the world to an end today? And it's, there's fear. And many of you are stuck because the problems of the world and the problems of your life and the problems that continue to trail you from your past they shout. I want to tell you today that there are some opportunities, even in the midst of your problems, even in the midst of your issues, there are some opportunities that are screaming. And God, I believe in 2024, 
wants to make you aware, wants to reveal to you the opportunity, the unique opportunity that is before you now. I believe that God can reveal to you an opportunity that will change your life. I believe that God can reveal to you, make you aware of opportunities that if you maximize the opportunity, the, the maximizing of the opportunity will make up for everything that you've messed up. I believe that there are opportunities that aren't obvious, that aren't shouting for your attention. There are opportunities in your life, in this world, in the particular field that you're in, there are opportunities that God wants to alert you to. And these opportunities will reset your life. How do I receive the revelation of the opportunities that are before me? And how do I respond? Remember we said there's a revelation. We, see, we receive the revelation, but then there's a response, right? So how do I get myself to this place of revelation where I can really see what it is that God wants me to see. Let's look at this. They're sitting there and they say, why are we sitting here until we die? Why are we sitting here until we die? Here are some questions that you can ask to catch the revelation of the unique opportunity that is before you right now. Question number one. Where does God want to shift my thinking? Where does God want to shift my thinking? These lepers were clearly sitting, waiting for whatever was going to happen, waiting for the leprosy to take them out, waiting for the famine to take them out, waiting for the Syrians to invade the city and take them out. They were just waiting for whatever was going to come. And I believe many of us are not living, we are simply breathing to death. We're not living. We are waiting. We're not expecting a future. We're not expecting God to do something amazing in our lives. What we're really doing is we're going through the motions. We're just, you know, living for the weekends. We are working to pay the bills. Got a nine to five. It's the way you make a living because you're getting by. That's what we're doing. We're raising the kids. We're sending them to school. We're going to work, picking up the kids, going to the store, ordering takeout, coming home, getting the kids ready for bed, going to sleep, not really living the life that God has created us to live. What can shift your life and awaken you out of that living death into the opportunity that God wants to reveal to you? A question. Why sit we here until we die? These lepers started to question their logic. They started to question their perspective on their problem. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you thought about the way you think? When was the last time that you asked yourself, God, do I have the right perspective on where I am right now? Do I have the right perspective on this marriage? Do I have the right perspective on my job? Do I have the right perspective on my career? Do I have the right perspective about how to use my money? Do I have the right perspective about this diagnosis, this problem? When was the last time that you challenged your own thinking? Because when you challenge your conclusions, it will raise some questions. And when you question your thinking, you will realize that you actually have more options than you think you do. So they started to say to themselves, look here, if we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, let us come and surrender to the army of the Syrians. 
Why would we do that? Because if they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. They said, if we stay here, that ain't going to change nothing. And if we try to make something out of the past, out of where we were, because we're no longer there, because when we got diagnosed with leprosy, we had to leave there. But if we go back there, back to the past, back to where it used to work, back to where we used to be, there's no hope there because the famine is in the city. So guess what? Going to the army of the Syrians might actually be an option for us because they could show mercy on us and they could keep us alive. But if they kill us, guess what? We're only going to get the result that we got now. You won't see the options and the opportunities before you until you recognize something that's worth a risk until you recognize that you have options that might be worth the risk. You won't recognize what God is trying to reveal to you until you reach the conclusion that where you are is where you cannot be. They came to the conclusion, I cannot stay here. We cannot stay stuck in this mode of thinking. We have to shift our perspective and re-examine this option because there might be some hope on the other side of this decision. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. So some of you all are worried about making some decisions because you're worried about and concerned about the life you might lose. Here's a question. Is the life you currently are living, the life you're currently living, is that the life that you believe God created you to live? This is getting heavy, I know. Some of y'all could get mad at me today. Is the life you're living currently the safe life, the comfortable life, the going through the motions life? Is that life the life that God created you to live? Or is there something that God might be bringing your attention to that's actually worth the risk of your life? Is there something that God wants to bring your attention to that's worth you saying, well, if it doesn't work out, I only failed. Well, if it doesn't work out, I only lost my life. That's okay. Jesus lost his life. God gave him another one. Is there something that you're aware of that God wants you to be prepared to take some risks. Jesus says in Luke 17, whoever chooses to save his life shall lose it, and whoever loses will lose his life shall find it. You may need to shift your thinking on how valuable it really is to keep living and thinking the way you've been living and thinking. So they take this risk. So the question, first question is, God, where do you want to shift my thinking? Is there a different perspective you want me to have? Is there a different idea that I could have about this moment in my life? Is there something you want me to see about what I have? Am I thinking that I don't have enough? And in thinking that I don't have enough, am I discounting what you can do with what I have? Am I telling myself that I don't have enough money so I can't do that? And therefore, am I missing the opportunity to see what you can do 
Where does God want to shift my thinking? Question number two. What is God trying to show me about my options? They carefully weighed these options. And they said, if we go into the city, if we go, we're going to die there. But maybe something different will happen if we go to these, the Syrians. What is it that God knows that I don't know? Because what you need to understand is that as these lepers are having a conversation, what they don't know is that the prophet Elisha has spoken earlier in this text and prophesied that between today and tomorrow, the economy was going to shift. This is a really good time for you to be leaning into what God wants to speak to you about your current situation. Because there are things happening in the economy, things happening in the industries of our nation and our world, things happening in the society that could be getting ready to flip this deadly context into a ripe opportunity for what God wants you to do. They don't know this. God knows what you don't know about your problems. So what is God trying to show me about my options? Do I have more options than I really think I do? And as he shifts my thinking, maybe I would see what he's trying to show me about what I can actually do in this place. So they get up, they make a move, and when they make this move, what happens? They make this move, and verse five, when they get to the camp, to their surprise, no one is there. When they get to the camp, to their surprise, no one was there. What does that mean? What they were expecting to happen did not happen. They expected to go and throw themselves on the mercy of the Syrian armies. And they said, this, this is either going to go one of two ways. They'll have mercy on us and let us live, or they'll kill us and we'll be dead. When they get there, they discover option three. Y'all, I'm about to shout. When you decide to move your feet, to move by faith, to take a risk, to leave the comforts of the known and enter the unknown, you begin to see how God is at work. Because the Bible says in the next verse that the Lord caused the Syrian army to hear the sound of chariots and a great army. And they thought that the armies of Israel were coming upon them. They thought that a great enemy was coming to overtake them and that the Hittites and the Egyptians were being hired by Israel to attack them. So God did something that the lepers could not do when the lepers did what the lepers could do. When the lepers did what the lepers could do, what they did not know was that God was at work doing something bigger than them that they could not do. And when they moved their feet, they saw what God was up to. Question number three, when the risk pays off, how can I share the reward? They said to one another, we are not doing right. This is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, let us go 
and tell the king's household. They said, we can't keep this to ourselves. God has been too good. You are on the other side of a risk. I believe that there are rewards for you, but it's never just about you. God wants to change your life so that you can then move your feet to share the good news with others. Come over here, see what God did when I decided to let him shift my perspective and hear the unique opportunity before me. Question number one, where does God want to shift my thinking? Question number two, what is God trying to show me about my options? What does God know that I don't know? Right? So when he challenges the way my perspective, what do I need to see that he sees? And then question number three, when the risk pays off, who can I bless? Who can I let God use me to bring them the good news of the reward on the other side of the risk that we can now share together? Father, I pray that you would bless your people with new perspectives. Give them a revelation of their options and opportunities. Speak to them. And God, when you blow their mind with what you do, help them see how the reward that they receive when their faith pays off can be a blessing to people around them and to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. See you here tomorrow, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Sunday night, we're going to go live at 7 p.m., okay? Sunday night is 7 p.m. I'll remind you tomorrow. But tomorrow is 7 a.m., same time. Meet me here. Keep this thing going. Have an amazing day. Be safe out there, Chicago land. All right, bye-bye.